hope you're all okay. Uh, just a quick screencast to talk to you about advertorials if you're doing the magazine brief. Uh, I'll post the film poster one um, later today. So the advertorial is the second part of your task one. So task one for the magazine brief is to do the front cover, double page spread and an advertorial for an original mainstream magazine aimed at an audience within that 18 to 34 bracket of mainstreamers and aspirers. Uh, now the brief states that your advertorial has to be for a product or a service that is relevant to the genre and content of your magazine. So as you're doing your research now, you should have a really strong idea after you follow my feedback of what kind of magazine you want to make, what your influences probably are, and like the overall aesthetic and content of the magazine. So for example, if it's Vogue, you're not gonna have an advert for Lamborghinis. And similarly, if you were doing an advert in GQ or something like GQ, um, you wouldn't have an advert for mascara. Um, so that's just making sure that it's appropriate to the genre of your magazine. It needs to have a headline, a stand first and an appropriate column layout. So this is the exam board saying that they want your advertorial to look like part of the magazine. They want it to look like an article. So same fonts, same aesthetic, same mode of address. You need to have original images relating to the product or the service. Uh, so remember in the brief for task one, you need to be completing or have eight original images in your coursework. I would put as many as you can in the advertorial because that then allows you to have a nice clean front cover and double page spread. And I'll show you an example in a bit of a couple that um, use multiple images and single images. You also need to have 150 to 200 words advertising the products in an appropriate mode of address. Um, I'm going to show you one later that's just for shampoos and there's a little paragraph of text for each shampoo that's being advertised in the advertorial. The mode of address should match the rest of the magazine. And you also need to have clear indication that this is advertising content. So preferably in the top right hand corner of the page, as you'll see in a bit, you will have a little tab that either gives the name of the brand um, or says something like affiliate content or advertising content. So uh, this is from copyblogger.com. The link is down at the bottom. Um, it's quite a long article talking about advertorials um, online, but this bit is quite nice for advertorials in print. So advertorials are native ads with a single purpose getting specific action from the reader. So a native ad, like I said, is something that looks like it belongs in the magazine. Um, and the specific action from the reader is to purchase the product or visit the website or um, share the content. Uh, it could be downloading, donating to a cause. It could be downloading something. Um, if you're online, subscribing to an email newsletter. If it's in a magazine, it could be something like visiting a store. So Estee Lauder quite often do adverts where they say, go to your local John Lewis or something for a free sample of this foundation. Um, and that then would get you into the shop and buying other products as well. An effective advertorial grips the reader and leads them to a logical conclusion, pointing them in very specific language to what to do next. That's called a call to action. So you'll remember from WaterAid, it said text Sunny to 63366 or whatever it said. That was the call to action. So the last paragraph and possibly the stand first of your advertorial should be the call to action. And it could be either a list or a guide. It could be an article. It says here it could be one page or six. We're asking you to complete either one page or a double page spread. Depending on how many images you've got and what kind of layout aesthetic you're going for, you could complete a single page or a double page. Um, and regardless of the format or the medium, most of them tell a story. So in terms of narrative, we're looking at kind of um, demonstrating a struggle and offering a resolution. So basic totter off in terms of narrative. The headline should introduce the topic perhaps using an intertextual reference or a play on words. So I'll show you in a little bit, um, one for shampoo that plays on the concept of dry weather. Um, the stand first should state what the struggle is. So perhaps the struggle is dry skin before offering a solution by showing you the products or the service. So for example, it's dry skin, and then it will show you that these moisturizers will keep your skin soft and supple. For people that watch Drag Race, I can't do the whistling thing that Heidi did. Um, 
that's for you. Focus on the senses if you're advertising a product. So how does your skin feel before you use the product? How will it feel after? Um, what does it smell like? What will it taste like if it's a food product? How will it feel on your lips if it's a lipstick? Um, how will it feel in your hair if it's a hair product? Um, how will it feel against your skin if it's clothing, for example, or a watch? Um, men's magazines advertising a watch. How does it feel? Is it heavy? Is it cold? Is it soft? Leather? Um, the narrative that begins the disequilibrium might be most suitable before offering a resolution and a promise of new equilibrium. So basically, unless there is a state of disequilibrium, you're not going to need this product. So the job of the advertorial is to convince you as a reader that something is wrong with your life and that if you buy this product, that problem will be fixed. Okay, so if you're creating a magazine for 24 to 35 year olds, um, you might decide to advertise an eye cream for men or for women that targets fine lines. So you would then need to state in your stand first that perhaps at the age of 33, 34, you're beginning to age, your skin is beginning to lose collagen, you're starting to lose that youthful look that you had perhaps in your 20s. These moisturizers will fix that for you. If you're advertising things like jewellery or accessories, focus on how the product is going to make the reader feel. So does it offer self-esteem? Does it offer status? If it's a piece of jewellery or if it's a watch, does the advert have it prominently showing on the model's skin? What other accessories are there? So if it is a watch, for example, is the person wearing the watch wearing a suit or have they got shirt sleeves rolled up or are they active outside? And how does that then offer the lifestyle to that reader? Does it fit into the lifestyle they already have or does it offer them a lifestyle that they aspire to? So that's really important for your advertorial as well. So in terms of advertorial conventions, like I was saying before, the mode of address should match your double page spread. Um, so that means if it's informal, chatty, friendly, use the same mode of address. If it's educational, formal, a bit more um, distant, perhaps use that mode of address. You need to have columns, a headline and a stand first. An affiliate content tab in the top right hand corner to conform to those advertising standards. Um, so when we come to do online this year, we'll look at advertising standards and how in the last five or six years with the explosion of YouTube influencers, um, a new set of regulations has been written so that readers aren't tricked into buying products because they feel like an influencer particularly has sold it to them um, so you need to make sure that you are advertising showing that this is advertising content really clearly if a selection of products is shown largely in advertorials they're cut out or photographed on a white background with high key lighting and no shadow so you're going to need to practice this over the next few weeks uh, in accessories for men if they're modeled they may be on a dark gray background to connote that masculinity um, and then as well as that heteronormative gender performance dominates mainstream advertorials. So perhaps the men, uh, magazines for men are advertising aftershave or shower gel if it's a sport magazine um, that is going to make you attractive to the opposite sex. It might be advertising razors that are going to offer you soft skin. Uh, magazines for women might be offering you um, products to make you attractive to the opposite sex. Um, so these heteronormative gender performance dominates those mainstream advertorials. And if you choose to challenge this, you should state why and how in your statement of aims and whether or not that would be a risk for the publisher. Because um, that then shows that you've incorporated Hesman Halge into your, your planning. So this is the first one, uh, the first advertorial I wanted to show you. So it's from a women's magazine. I think it's from Grazia or L. Uh, it says dry spell up at the top and then it says, heads up those of you who hate your fried, dried and dehydrated hair. Iden may be just what you need. So there we have uh, identification of a struggle and a solution. The words dry spell could refer to the weather, but in this case, the anchorage of the bottles indicates hair care. We have our dropped cap S. So you'll see again, that doesn't go higher than the top line and it goes down for the first three or four lines to show us where to start reading. Uh, so that there is within the conventions of the magazine. Uh, there's a byline just in the gutter, which would be the name of the photographer and perhaps the journalist who wrote this. The white background and the high key lighting, so we can see kind of the lighting hitting those bottles, connotes hope 
aspiration, equilibrium. Those colour coded subheadings match the colour of the bottles. So we have green where it says revitalised dry hair, yellow where it says resurrect limp hair. Um, so those there tailor the products to the reader's need and then make them more likely to buy this product. And then the black box at the bottom offers more information, shows them the social media and shows them where they can go to buy the product. So we've got four images on here, which then means that you would need four images across the double page spread and your front cover. So all of a sudden that job becomes a lot easier. Um, we'll see here that we do have 150 to 200 words, so it doesn't have to crowd the page. You'll see it doesn't look like it's overbalanced in terms of text versus images. Um, and the black boxes of color just break up the white and draw attention to them. So our call to action as well would be in that black box at the bottom because that would be where the link is to buy the product. This next one is an online avatorial, but it's quite nice for men. So after 100 years, the shaving industry is finally being disrupted. Um, so the social media links here are positioned prominently down the side of the page. So Facebook, Twitter, Mailit and Reddit. Um, the cutting edge in red at the top is polysemic. Uh, it means both trendy and it means sharp blades. It's in red black and white, which are typical colours in the men's lifestyle genre because they connote strength, passion, determination, decisiveness. Um, and the headline offers something new to a grooming routine that most men go through uh, at least once a week. So it says the shaving industry is finally being disrupted. So something that every man uh, should or may have experience of. Um, and then it says Stand First aligns with the new shaving brands with the market leader Gillette. So the Gillette stick duopoly better watch out for Dollar Shave Club and Harry's, which promise more convenience and less cost to do what men hate most in the morning. Uh, so it's saying that Gillette are watching their back because they're of a new set of uh, kind of startup shaving companies that deliver uh, the blades and the razor handle and the cream and the gel to your house so you've not got to buy them and they're also at a discounted price compared to what you would pay for with Gillette. That white background again connotes hope, aspiration and equilibrium. Uh, it says more convenience and less cost so it's making it very easy for the reader to make a decision about whether to switch brands. Um, we have the name of the author in a photo there as well in black and white, again, to create that decisive mode of address. Um, and then the first sentence is very chatty, but also very heteronormative. So don't look now, bros, but your morning routine is getting disrupted in a good way. Um, so use of the colloquial term bros uh, is evidently targeting a heteronormative, laddish um, audience. Uh, and the photo of that journalist may make the reader trust the article. So you'll see the difference between that and the dry spell one, which was a lot more friendly, a lot more gentle. Um, and that there plays into those gender stereotypes, those gender performance stereotypes. Um, lastly, one for a mascara. Here we've got four images. So we've got one image of the model, two images of the mascara and one of the brush. It says Maybelline New York special up in the top right hand corner, again, indicating that this is affiliate content. Go on, be a drama queen. So go on is a call to action or a push to be more bold. It's a subtlety is passe. So make bold your new catchword. Here are nine ways to get noticed. Uh, and the cantered images and canted purple strips, the ripped text and the stamped numbers at different angles all connote the New York punk scene where in the 70s people made their own um, posters and things kind of got wonky when they were printed um, and then they were stuck up on balls. So this is all relating to that. Um, tip number one is ignore curious stares. Tip number two is why wait for Halloween to get flamboyant? Tip three is don't be shy. Statement accessories are the 
something 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 um bold and beautiful is down at the bottom as well the yellow and purple match the product and they're very very vibrant colors compared to the dry spell article that would suggest to me that this is perhaps aimed at a slightly younger audience who do celebrate halloween who do feel like they can take a risk who do have boyfriends whose clothes they can steal um you perhaps have disposable income to spend on bright makeup and also reasons to wear it. Um, the brush at the end of the Z line shows prospective buyers what the inside of the product is like. We could argue that this is an intertextual reference for women. Um, so most women that perform a female gender will wear makeup and will have at least seen a mascara brush, even if they haven't used one before. And then the magnum at the bottom connotes the size of the product got 17 tip and bold and beautiful down at the bottom there so all of this is a very um vibrant and almost aggressive call to action um very very different to the dry spell one more similar to the cutting edge one because it's aimed at a slightly younger audience and then lastly um we have a dry's van noten advertorial from mr porter um mr porter if you look online is fantastic for advertorials. Uh, so those of us that are doing men's lifestyle magazines might want to look at Mr. Porter. Um, it's a website that's kind of like a fashion outlet. Um, so if we look down here, everything is written as kind of an advertorial. It's presented as a magazine rather than as a website catalog. Um, so everything is posted as a, like separate articles. But if you go at the top to the journal, you'll see all of the articles um, positioned on the page. Uh, so exclusives from Lowe's, Paula's, Ibiza, Ibiza capsule. So we're talking fashion there. Uh, sales, we've got something about post lockdown food. So we see a variety of content here. Um, and if we come this way, we'll see here. Father's Day gift guide, our picks for every kind of dad. So there, that would be an advertorial. So we can click on all of these. Um, five tips for coping with health anxiety, how to travel the world without leaving your house. So we see a variety of um, topics as well. Officine General's guide to understated summer style is quite a nice advertorial that I was looking at the other day. Um, so it doesn't appear as a advertorial that appears as an article. So words by Mr. Ashley Clark, photography by Mr. Louis Basquiat. Um, so the words Mr. there offer, first of all, brand identity because we have the Mr. Porter, but also a bit of formality here. And we see here a man in his uh, early to mid forties, very well dressed, same shoes, same trousers, different top halves every day. Um, and we talk about effortless Parisian style, let a chore jacket do the work, shop the look, mixed linen and chambray, shop the look. So this is an advertorial. Um, Mr. Porter is an offshoot of net porter which is a very, very famous uh, website, which started possibly seven, eight years ago now, um, that sells designer brands to the public. Um, but we're talking kind of AB, yeah, AB aspirers and mainstreamers, um, people that earn kind of high wages, but are also perhaps quite young. Um, we have the magazine here, which is quite nice for someone to look at. Laura Harrier, um, up and coming actress who was in Spider-Man Homecoming. Um, daytime dressing, bags that spark joy. So a little Marie Kondo intertextual reference there. And all of these kind of Instagram influencer images of people walking across streets. The walking across roads um, image is becoming a semiotic code for fashion and influencing. So regardless of your genre, of your gender, sorry, if you're creating a lifestyle magazine, it's worth trying to get this kind of image um, to really kind of show that you have a good understanding of the genre. Um, and then lastly, here's one for Mango. So we'll see that this does appear more like an article and we've got orange right the way through because it's by Mango. We see the serif font similar to the magazine and we see one, two, three, four, five images on this advertorial. Um, so really what I'd like you to do is 
Find three advertorials in your chosen genre and complete that semiotic deconstruction of each of them. So just like I've done there, you can always, like I said, pause this, go back, watch it again, take notes. You can use the ones that I've used if you want. So the Dries Van Noten and the Mango one might be quite nice for you if you're doing that kind of genre. I couldn't find any football ones, annoyingly, um, but if you have football magazines at home, if that's your genre or sports, then you can always take photos, annotate them and then send it in to me um, like that. Um, you can always upload the photos and then type your annotations onto the document. Um, I would like you then to send three ideas for what kind of product or service you could create for your advertorial. Um, it should be an original product with original photography and journalism. You'll need to plan what props you think you'll need and how you're going to light them. And then if you can, send me some practice photos um, when you upload your work. Um, it's a really good idea to start practicing your photography now, um, just because the weather is starting to brighten up lockdown is easing off slightly. If you do want to take photos of people, obviously make sure you still abide by social distancing guidelines to keep yourself safe. Um, but I'm really looking forward to seeing what you do with this. All right, thanks.